The Great North Museum is a centre for natural history and ancient civilization in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. It is located at the north of the city, adjacent to the town moor. In this video, we will see the building and some of its contents gathered over 240 years. Marmaduke Tunstall's large collection of global ethnographic and natural history material dates back to around 1780. The Literary and Philosophical Society obtained the collection in 1823. The oldest object still on display is a wombat. The Natural History Society of Northumberland, Durham and Newcastle-upon-Tyne was established in 1829 as a scientific branch of the Literary and Philosophical Association. Joshua Alder, Albany and John Hancock, Prido John Selby and William Chapman Hewittston were some of the initial and early members of the society. In 1884, the museum was relocated to its present site thanks to a generous £11,500 donation from William Armstrong. Armstrong also founded the College of Physical Science, which became Newcastle University. Two local Victorian naturalists, Albany and John Hancock, the museum was renamed in their honour in the 1890s. In 1959, the University of Newcastle agreed to take care of the museum and its collections. Since 1992, the university has had an agreement with Tyne and Weir archives and museums to manage the facility. After a short closure, the larger and refurbished Great North Museum reopened in May 2009. A partnership between Newcastle University, Tyne and Weir Museums, Newcastle City Council, the Natural History Society of Northumbria, the Society of Antiquaries of Newcastle-upon-Tyne and the Heritage Lottery Fund paid for the refurbishment of the building and the collection at a total of £26 million. The museum occupies a majestic Victorian building designed in 1884 by John Wardle in the manner of John Dobson. It is built in the Greek Revival style with a distinctive limestone ashlar face with rectangular pilasters between five plain windows on the first floor central section with doors on the ground floor. There are two heavy cross-shaped side wings, the whole topped by a stepped cornice of darker stone. It is a Grade II listed building. The modern rectangular box shape of the new extension provides a sharp contrast. The architecture of the Great Northern Museum is a captivating and attractive old building with a soulless new austerity cabinet of curiosities tacked on at the rear. The museum's mission is to stimulate and inform visitors about nature as well as the legacy and culture of the Northeast. The museum gives a fascinating and educational experience to people of all ages and origins. It collects, preserves and displays objects and specimens related to the natural world, archaeology and local history with a focus on the Northeast of England. It provides high-quality educational programs, events and resources that engage visitors and encourage learning and exploration. It promotes scientific research and scholarship in the fields of natural history, archaeology and anthropology and supports collaboration and partnerships with other institutions and organisations. It contributes to the social, cultural and economic life of the region by providing a valuable resource for local communities, schools and visitors to the area. The Great North Museum aspires to be an eminent centre for education and exploration, giving visitors a view of not only the past and present of the northeast of England, but also of global ecology. 
The museum holds over 1.5 million exhibits related to natural history, archaeology and local history from ancient times to the present. The Hadrian's Wall Gallery houses a large collection of artefacts related to Roman life on the frontier, built in AD 122, that spans the width of northern England. Here we can see ceremonial altars and monuments celebrating renowned citizens. A Syrian warrior is depicted ready for battle. The cult of Mithras was a secretive sect with elaborate rituals requiring special clothes to worship in dark, mysterious temples men only. Does this ring any bells for a modern so-called secret society? Romans had a panoply of personal gods. They were free to worship as they wished. Soldiers at Benwell on the fort favoured Ancinoti Titus. The earlier Greeks are represented in the museum by pottery, sculpture and art from Greece and Etruria in the 8th to the last third of the last century BC. This Etruscan alabaster funerary urn depicts the moment when Trojan Paris snatched Helen, the Spartan king's wife, to trigger the Trojan War. Nike, the goddess of victory, landing on a globe, is typical of the classical marble sculpture featuring the beauty of the human form created by Polycletus and Praxiteles. Pottery of this period often shows scenes from battles or preparations for war. Aristotle said that the Greeks combined the spirit of the people from the cold north with the intelligence and skill of those from Asia. Going further back in time, the ancient Egyptians had a long history from the 32nd century BC to the death of Cleopatra in 30 BC. During that time, myths and beliefs surrounding death were strong. The priesthood ordered the wrapping of dead bodies in mummies, sometimes with elaborate outer cases. The dead needed food and drink for their afterlife. This stele shows Peninu and Nui heaping goods onto an offering table. Pharaoh Ramses II watches over the gallery, he lived from 1303 until 1213 BC. He is regarded as the most powerful ruler of the New Kingdom. He was victorious in battle as well as the builder of monumental palaces, temples and cities. This small image is of Cyrus with her son Horus. She was wise, kind and protective of children. Horus is depicted as a falcon, ruler of the sky, although with time he became multi-layered. William Cooper and Dorothy Murdoch have suggested that Horus was the origin of the Jesus fable. Ertiru was a woman who died around age 30. She was buried in Thebes. In 1830, Newcastle experts examined her, then varnished her remains for preservation. The Rosetta Stone, on display in the British Museum in London, was discovered by Pierre-Francois Bouchard during the Napoleonic campaign. It contains a Ptolemaic decree repeated in hieroglyphics, demotic script and Greek, which unlocked the mystery of the ancient languages. This is a life-sized copy. Before humans evolved, dinosaurs roamed the Earth. The forerunners of present-day birds, these huge beasts left behind traces that amaze us today. Taking centre stage is the Tyrannosaurus rex. This most complete skeleton ever found of this creature was excavated in Montana in America. Waterborne creatures left their remains. Here, an ammonite died in the mud over 60 million years ago, but left its impression for us today.
The Natural Northumbria Gallery showcases the variety of habitats and wildlife of the northeast. Culture Gallery you will find a colourful variety of objects from around the globe. The samurai warrior with his deadly swords presents a fearful figure. Other more peaceful items bring the heartbeat down again, only for these scary tribal totems to leap out at you. Lose yourself in the Living Planet Gallery's diversity of life on Earth, featuring plants and animals from around the world. Highlights of the gallery include a life-size model of a great white shark, an elephant, and a range of preserved animals. This is Sparky, a Newcastle budgerigar famous for her speaking ability. She lived from 1954 until 1962, featuring in TV and advertising campaigns, even making a record. The Living Planet poses the question of the impact humanity is having on the natural environment. How many of these animals will become extinct due to our race for food, timber, oil and natural resources? How do our sprawling cities and their piles of rubbish destroy habitat for our fellow travellers on planet Earth? such a diverse collection, there is something to capture the interest of visitors of all ages and interests. Watch some more from Radio Jonathan. Subscribe to the channel. Enjoy.